Hello and welcome to the Moon Oddities Part 2. Um, some of you expressed a bit of concern over the previous video. Just a uh, heavy cold, that's all it is. And I'm a lot better today, I slept better last night. I'm still not 100%. A friend of mine has gone out today to get some things for me to help fight this off. And I'm well enough at the moment with enough energy to put this out and get part two out. So I left a link under the previous video, Moon Oddities Part 1, for the NASA paper on they, they found water. Now there is a video on YouTube about a NASA guy talking about water being discovered. This is some years old now. And uh, I don't know why, but it doesn't look like they've revisited, analysed this. Maybe there's nothing else to say. They don't really uh, talk about this in greater detail other than finding uh, this NASA guy who's got buckets and depicting all the, these amounts of buckets could be filled up. So there's a lot of water being found. And again, and again it's an oddity because moon rocks been brought back are extremely dry, not even water molecules locked up in in, in uh, minerals at all. So it just seems a bit off that they wouldn't really go into a bit more detail on this. On top of this, a vapour cloud was observed around 14 hours. Let me repeat that one. About 14 hours worth of vapour cloud um, dura time duration 14 hours was observed on the moon covering about 100 square miles this prompted Rice University uh, Dr. John Freeman Jr. and Dr. Ken Hills to announce that uh, this is one of the most exciting discoveries yet right so it, this indicated water within the moon and their thought process was when his moon quakes which does happen it's releasing water from inside outwards to the surface that would make sense we get hot springs on earth and things like that um, although is is the internal core of the moon hot is there even an internal core in, internal core um, don't know. Uh, it's all somewhat very questionable because of these oddities, these somewhat contradictions, or at least contradicting the standard model how we think the moon is, as opposed to how it really is. Uh, they speculated that. Um, sorry, uh, reading paragraph. I lost my place. Two physicists uh, claim that the vapour came from in the moon. Some NASA officials had a far more mundane and somewhat, I would say this is a very questionable explanation. And we go into why. They speculated that two tanks on Apollo descent stages contained, sorry, containing between 60 and 100 pounds of water became stressed and ruptured. Releasing their contents, Freeman and Hales declined to accept this explanation, pointing out that the two tanks from Apollo 12 and 14 were some 180 kilometers apart, yet the vapor, the water vapor, was detected with the same flux at both sites, although the instruments faced in opposite directions. That's, you know, the tanks, opposite directions, and, you know, many more understandably questioned the odds of these two separate tanks breaking simultaneously, and how such a small quantity of water we produce 100 square miles of vapour.
doesn't you know the math actually doesn't add up and dr freeman and ken hill's are physicists by the way so you know you don't just throw their explanations out the window is it possible they misinterpreted what they saw yeah fine anyone can do that but you know there's some credibility to be noted here and who the national officials were to say this we've yet to satisfactorily find out um they're not really it might not be that important at this stage anyway moon rocks were found to be magnetized as well yet the moon has no magnetic field not the one that is really consistently detected anyway this is not enough to pick up a paper clip or anything tiny like that but magnetic nevertheless so where did the magnetism come from maybe just a theory that i have uh, we're told the moon was a lot closer and it is moving further and further away each year anyway is it possible that our own magnetic field could have influenced this and it's got some residual um, I don't know I don't know if it would does it work that way I don't know so furthermore anyway uh, like there's no de official detection of magnetic field yet there's this magnetism uh, the another oddity is the presence of Maria Maria is large seas of smooth rock on the surface of the moon itself these maria indicate nothing less than a vast outpouring of molten rock at some distant time it's now confirmed that some of the moon's craters are from a, a internal origin as well this because the shape some of them have more of a uh, pushed out from in shape than it is pushed in from outside so the core could have been molten somehow uh, very hot um, perhaps it, perhaps there is no core I don't know the, the, you'll see reasons why I'm saying that as well so this is very interesting you know it's not just a dead rock it's not just a dead ball that we think of when we see that sky sky at night or in the day depending on where it is in orbit we see it in the sky most of us think of it as oh it's a place where manned missions have gone to uh, they think in terms of perhaps that could be developed as, as a at some time in the future a settlement for thing to be lifting off from there because um, you don't have to escape a huge gravitational pull with extra energy needed from uh, earth and so on and you know lots of things they think in terms like that and they th but they don't consider just how active this is this ball of rock is not just a dead ball of rock another puzzle is uh, four, about four fifths of that Maria rock are located on moon's earth side uh, very few located on the far side as we know there's tidal locking and we only see one side of our moon because its spin is, you know, relative turn is the same as speed as the, the it going around the curve of the Earth. So we only see one side, right? And there's no dark side of the moon. That's a myth. Um, a very late, very simple simplistic obvious thing would be what do you think happens during a solar eclipse when the moon's you know the, 
the bit that's not lit up really would be the face the side facing us right and it's lit up all the time anyway as it goes into orbit around and around Well, not all the time, but just when it's close enough to be. So, moving on, the few, very few Mario are on the far side of the moon, uh, yet uh, far side contains many more craters. The far side contains more craters than the near side, but the near side has more molten rock than the far side. Again, it seems a bit odd, though. If you imagine the early origins of our solar system when things are a bit more chaotic, still settling down, and uh, there's rock being slammed into the moon here and there, all that bombardment, it's going to generate a lot of heat, right? So they're going to cause some molten heat, molten rock maybe, uh, enough heat generated to have the surface molten. And yet where there's most bombardment from things slamming into the moon, there's less evidence of rock that's been set from a molten state than there is on the other side where there's not many craters anyway, compared in comparison to the far side. The whole thing is just seems to be... Con a whole set of contradictions towards the standard model of how we think our moon came about. Uh, it doesn't add up to the same logic applied to to the standard model versus something happened in our moon's history. A uh, whole set of things we just don't know about, and this is why it is the way it is today. And uh, some of the officials, the some scientists, are actually saying there could have been an extraterrestrial influence with this. I don't know if that's true. Uh, it is a very bold claim. Uh, there's no way to prove that, um, but it, it is just uh, interesting to go through all this and see this is something that we need to learn a lot more about um, is large dense circular masses lying 20 to 40 miles below the center of the moon's maria uh, in certain areas the, the these are known as mascons uh, these were discovered because their denseness distorted the orbits of spacecraft so the mass that is causing a gravitation has changed as it went into orbit because of the the big change in the surface less dense and so that's interesting. This distorted the orbit spacecraft flying over near them. Uh, one scientist proposed that the mascons are heavy iron meteorites that plunged deep into the moon while it was in a soft formable stage. This theory has been discounted though since um, meteorites strike with such high velocities they would vaporize on contact. Another more mundane explanation is that the mascons have nothing more sorry, are nothing more than lava filled caverns. But skeptics say there isn't enough lava present to accomplish this and it would seem that mascons are huge disc shaped objects possibly of artificial construction. It is unlikely that large circular discs located directly under the 
centre of the Mario like a giant bullseye happened by accident or coincidence. That leaves me with part one. There's more uh, to talk about between the years 1969 and 1977. Apollo mission using seismic equipment and measuring things, seismic data on the moon. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Take care. And I look forward to doing part three soon. Cheers. Bye.